Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and we need to explore the tragic backstory of Sally because of the new Nightmare Before Christmas novel Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, which I'll be sharing spoilers to in this video, we now know where Sally came from before she arrived in Halloween Town. Her relationship with Dr. Finkelstein has changed forever, how she was really created has been revealed and it turns out she's not the only ragdoll across all of the holiday towns. Almost a year since the Pumpkin King took over Christmas, Jack and Sally got married Married. And through that event, Sally transformed into the Pumpkin Queen of Halloween Town. She rose far above her station as a former prisoner and servant, which set her on a path to discover who she truly was. But with the help of today's sponsor, Established Titles, you don't have to be royalty to earn a respected title. You see, it's a historic Scottish custom that landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. So when you purchase a title pack from Established Titles and are granted a one square foot piece of land in Scotland, you become a lord or lady. We don't need to marry someone of high standing, you can receive a certificate that highlights your unique plot number and acts as proof of your newfound title. That proclamation allows you to officially update your name on things like credit cards and plane tickets so you can ensure you're referred to by your new honorable designation. And if you're one of the first 200 people to purchase a title through my link, you'll have a plot close to mine. But Established Titles does more than bestow you with a dignified moniker. With every order, they plant trees and work with charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the future so that they can not only preserve the woodlands of Scotland, but also help reforestation efforts globally. Much like the Pumpkin King and Queen as lords and ladies, we are responsible for protecting our home. Right now, Established Titles is running a massive early Black Friday sale, and if you use code ISAAC10, you can get an additional 10% off. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash ISAAC10 to earn the title of Lord or Lady for yourself or someone you love. Now the truth is that Sally was not built, she was born a ragdoll in a another magical world called Dreamtown. Ever since I saw The Nightmare Before Christmas in elementary school, I never questioned that Dr. Finkelstein brought Sally to life since we saw him create flying skeleton reindeer and he built his own wife, who's apparently named Jewel, I guess. I, along with everyone in Halloween Town, was convinced that she was patched together by that scientist. Maybe she had once been a human from the mortal world whose corpse was brought back, but I never considered that she was from any other place. But we learn in Long Live the Pumpkin Queen that deeper into the forest outside of Halloween Town, there was an endless number of ancient realms and long forgotten doors that existed before any of the holidays came into being. There are infinite magical places to explore, which is obviously so exciting to find out as someone who loves Disney lore, because this completely expands our understanding of the Nightmare Before Christmas's world. Right now, I'm currently working on a complete breakdown of what's inside every holiday town, so make sure to subscribe for that video so you can see it as soon as it comes out on Halloween. Now, on one of those many doors, there was a crescent moon and a pathway to a place called Dreamtown, the magical place responsible for drifting people to sleep. This is where the Sandman came from, but he didn't rule that community. Dreamtown is actually led by two ragdolls named Albert and Greta. They are the governors of Dreamtown, and they are Sally's true parents. Sally wasn't an invention or a creation. She was born, was named after her grandmother, and had a happy life in Dreamtown until she was taken at the age of 12. You see, back when Dr. Finkelstein was a younger man, even before he was bound to a wheelchair, he admitted that he had tried for many years to create his own daughter, but all of his experiments to create a rag doll of his own had failed. At the same time, he also became obsessed with searching for the other realms that he had learned about in one of the books within his lab. What intrigued him specifically specifically was a magical particle called dream sand, which was a dust that could put people to sleep. So he went looking for the town where it was made so that he could study it for himself. But when he arrived in Dreamtown and discovered Sally, he decided to take her to study and to pass off as his own creation instead of taking the dream sand. He did this so he could attempt to become a respected scientist and inventor within Halloween Town. While the governor's butler luckily saw Finkelstein steal Sally from her childhood bedroom, by the time Albert and Greta were able to go after their daughter, it was already too late. In hopes of no one discovering his treachery, Dr. Finkelstein blocked the Dreamtown's doorway into Halloween Town so that no one could come searching for Sally. And to ensure Sally never tried to return to Dreamtown, Finkelstein used a forgetting potion of bat wings and swamp water to erase all of her memories of her home. He locked out Sally's family, poisoned her mind, and went to great efforts to ensure the doors to all of the realms were left forgotten. Finkelstein even took out 
out Sally's stuffing as she was originally filled with air puffed Dreamtown cotton and replaced it all with old autumn leaves. He defiled her to boost his own reputation, kept her locked away so he could study her, and attempted to control her entire life. Sally was destined to rule a completely different world that was taken away from her by an insidious, self absorbed, and domineering being. Dr. Finkelstein tried to keep her submissive by dismissing her curiosity, punishing her often, and mocking her by calling her a foolish dreamer, but nothing he could do would keep her from who she was meant to be. In Dreamtown, they produced fields of lavender, and in Halloween Town, Sally was captivated by her work in the gardens. Growing up, she constantly looked to the stars, was in her own head, and daydreamed of fairy tales, and that was all because she was a child to people who adored the night, the calmness of sleep, and the power of dreams. Her connection to Dreamtown could even explain how Sally was capable of having a prophetic vision that showed Jack's Christmas becoming a disaster. The dreams she had at night and during the day were powerful because she descended from the beings who led, controlled, and are connected to dreams. Now there was one time where Sally was said to have discovered the book that described her original home, but when Finkelstein found her with it, he took it away saying it was not for her. He punished her and told her that she was better suited for making and serving him meals instead of worrying about other worlds. Of course, Sally wasn't willing to completely embrace Finkelstein's words though. She rebelled so she could search for adventure and love. Whenever she had the chance, Sally would poison Dr. Finkelstein, escape through her window, and run away. Supposedly, she became quite the potion maker after all those years in Finkelstein's lab because she longed to be free with the skeleton man she loved. Finkelstein did everything he could to keep her within his prison as a slave, and to some extent it did work. In Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, Sally explained that even after she was married to Jack, there was a part of her that felt like she didn't deserve anything better than her old life because she had experienced it for so many years. One of my favorite songs from The Nightmare Before Christmas is Sally's song. She sings about how sad it makes her that the man she loves is obsessing over something that could be his undoing. And now knowing that she had suffered for so many years unnecessarily because of Finkelstein makes her moments of sadness even more tragic. In a life with her parents in Dreamtown, she would have never had to experience that kind of pain. She would have never put herself in position to be destroyed like Jack almost did. When the truth about Dr. Finkelstein's treachery was eventually exposed, the Pumpkin King definitely took care of it because he'd already built up a deep resentment towards Finkelstein for the way he treated Sally. Under Jack's commands, Finkelstein was sent away to serve the citizens of Dreamtown for a century, and he was commanded to provide Sally with unlimited access to his gardens and lab for the rest of time. While there were moments when Sally didn't believe she had a desire to be a leader, when she reunited with her parents, discovered where she truly came from, and defeated the Sandman after he'd been unleashed upon all of the holiday worlds, she finally saw that she was capable of so much more than she had ever been taught to believe. After she traveled to all of the holiday worlds, saved her husband, and discovered who she truly was, that's when she embraced her new role as the Pumpkin Queen. To experience the full story of Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, I highly recommend getting the audiobook through my Audible trial link in the description. I personally listened to this book through Audible, as I do most books now, and I appreciated all of the music and narration that made the story very entertaining to listen to. Using my link will allow you to get this audiobook or any audiobook of your choosing for free, and you can keep it forever even if you don't renew your subscription. While well, you're down there, if you'd like to get my extremely comfortable Queen of Halloween t-shirt or you'd like to get some other magical clothing and goodies check out the relaunch merch shop at imaginativestore.com. Finally thanks for watching and have a magical day.